Hey guys, my name is Priscilla Elias and today it's time for the last maternity photo shoot you will see on this channel. Or maybe at least the last self-maternity photo shoot. If you've been here before, you know I did a first video with a maternity photo shoot shot with a phone. Then I did a second one with ideas, poses and tips for a studio maternity photo shoot I did without my husband. And now in week 34, it's time for a final couple maternity photo shoot with fun ideas for poses for the ones of you who want to know what to do for your photos. This video should help both photographers willing to shoot maternity couple photo shoots, as well as couples wanting to shoot their own photos by themselves, as it was my case with Ricardo. I will show you the whole process of this photo shoot, how we took the photos, the poses we did, tips that I consider important to think about before and during the shoot, as well as the equipment and settings I use to take these pictures. That way, if you want to do some photos just like this, you'll know exactly how to get to that same result. Said that, let's start this out. Right after the intro. <laughs> So first things first, I said on the last video I did where I took the solo mom photos in week 29, and I will mention this again as I consider this even more important now than I did when I took those first shots. Consider taking your maternity photos anytime throughout week 29 and 34. If you already feel heavy by week 29, I would consider it doing as soon as possible, as believe me, it only gets harder and harder the more you wait. Especially if you're taking the photos yourself or if you're going outdoors or somewhere where you need to walk more than usual. Of course that it's always nice to have photos of your bum when it's as big as you can get, but in my opinion it's better to be safe than sorry and for that reason, even if you're doing this photo shoot for a couple as a photographer and not for yourself as a couple, Maybe you should talk to the mom-to-be to see how she's feeling and if she thinks it's okay to wait a bit longer or if you should do it a bit earlier and guarantee the photo shoot in the first place. The perfect timing is very personal, but it's always good to keep this in mind. Now, let's talk about equipment. For the photos you're about to see here, I used a Canon 5D Mark IV, a Canon 85mm 1.8 lens, a black studio backdrop from the backdrop made in muslin with a wall backdrop support that I have mounted to my wall. And you can use an adjustable and removable backdrop support system like this one in case you prefer, as it might be a more versatile option for you. I used a G-Coto tripod, which you might not need in case you're not taking self-portraits. As a main light, I used my Godox SL60W along with the newer 120cm Octobox to soften the light and as a complementary light, I used this portable LED light from WeLight, the RB9, especially to light the lower part of my bump, so I could get a better quality of light also for the bump, which is a very important part of the photo in the maternity photo shoot. I will leave a link for all the gear I mentioned here in the description in case you want to check it out. Said that, let's talk about lighting. Please note how I position the light to light my portraits here. 45 degree angle above the subject's head. Try having your subject either entirely facing the light or at least partially facing the light. My light is here, so half face facing the light for more dramatic portraits, entire face facing the light for more beauty looking portraits. If you have to choose having more shadows in one of the couple's faces, I suggest to have more shadows for the man. Even when I shoot weddings, I always keep this tip in my mind. Direct light to the women, as you will have a softer, beauty-looking light. More shadows to the men, as you will have more drama, which usually looks very nice for men. If you don't have a light like mine, it's okay. You can either use a strobe with a softbox, or maybe a simple white umbrella with an external flash mounted in a similar position to what I did here for this photo. You might not have the exact same result, but I guarantee you will also have a very decent one. So it's really up to you. 
If you want to use your light for videos also, ASL60W, like mine, could be one of the best options. If you only do photos, then a strobe with an octobox could be the best if you have some space to keep that equipment, or if you want a lot of versatility and want to be able to put that light in light stand up and down real quick. For example, if you shoot in many different places, at your clients' houses, or if you don't have a place to leave your equipment mounted, an umbrella with an external flash could be the best way to go for you. Can you use natural light? Yes, in case you have a good window and shoot at a good time of the day when the light comes in beautifully, then you can. You will have to test it out though. For that reason, when I shoot in my clients' houses, for example, I always take an umbrella a light stand and an external flash with me. Because even if I know they have a good window with beautiful light coming in, I don't know if the light is good throughout the entire day, at what time the light looks good, if the weather is going to be good at the day of the shoot. So having an artificial light with me gives me the certainty I need that I will be able to take good photos no matter what. On the other hand, if you shoot somewhere with a good light and you know what the best times of the day are when it comes to lighting, you might schedule your shoot for that specific part of the day and you should be safe anyway. So again, it really depends on the space you have and your specific needs as a photographer or as a couple wanting to take their own photos. With all of this said, here are the photos we took for our first couple's maternity photo shoot along with the settings I used to take them. Then I had two other fun ideas I saw on Pinterest that I wanted to try out. And before I show you that, here's another tip I have for you. Think of the ideas and search for references before the date of the shoot. That way you can go after possible accessories and take whatever you need for the date of the shoot. The same go for outfits. Think about them before the date of the shoot. Try them out and take a photo in front of the mirror to see how you actually feel when looking at it. Get planned ahead. That way, when it comes to the date of the shoot, you will feel more relaxed and you won't be tired from spending hours trying out your wardrobe. Plus, you will avoid any possible frustrations of maybe not fitting into an outfit you had in mind for the shoot that now, at the date of the shoot, does not fit your bump anymore. So planning in advance is important for the couples and also for photographers. If you're not shooting yourself, then ask your clients what they have in mind. If they don't have any ideas, show them some and help them out so you will also be prepared with whatever you need in order to get the best shots. So here are the fun shots we took for this photo shoot. I will show you some photos we took for Christmas that might be a little outdated at this specific time of the year, but that depending on when you watch this video might also bring you some helpful ideas and inspiration for your photo shoot. The reason why we took these photos holding our son's gloves was because we want to take the same photo for next Christmas, but this time having Luca with us, wearing the clothes that have been waiting for him. And finally, just some more ideas for an outdoor couple's maternity photo shoot. These are some photos I took for some of my clients, which I think are pretty creative, fun, and easy to do. And here, for external shots, it's even easier for a photographer to get good shots as you can use natural light instead of artificial light. My only tip is choose a good hour of the day, usually one to two hours after the sun comes out or before the sun sets. Or if the light is too strong and harsh, search for shadows. Cloudy days are also amazing for portraits. I won't get further into details about this on this video, but if you want more tips on how to light your photos for your outdoor portraits, I have an entire video only talking about that, for which you will find a link up here and also in the description. And that's it, guys! If this video helped you, please consider hitting the like button and also consider subscribing to this channel. 
That way you will also help me a lot to keep creating content like this one for you. I would also love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Please let me know how helpful this was. Please let me know if you think I left anything out that you would have liked to have seen me talk about in this video, as it will also help me to keep creating better and better content that actually really helps you out. And well, that is all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this and I will see you in the next video. Ciao!